Today we're going to be looking at graphing linear equations. Uh, the first time that we do it, we're going to be looking at this y equals uh, type of notation, where the linear equation actually begins with y equals. And sometimes you have linear equations written this way because it's nice for graphing. Um, sometimes you have them written in what's called standard notation. We've been looking at that. And standard notation is the standard way you write uh, linear equations. It's easy to send in an email this way. You don't have any of these fractions to deal with. It's also just the one standard way that everybody writes their equations. Uh, therefore, if you're sharing information, um, perhaps to scientists from different countries uh, talking about equations, that every type of uh, function or equation has a standard way of being written. And in Algebra 1, we just look at the standard uh, the standard uh, standard form of linear equations. Okay, so in order to graph something that's in the y equals formation, we, uh, we invent some x values. And we get to choose any x values we want. Those are the independent variable. And then the y's are dependent. They depend on whatever x ones that we choose. Uh, we also call these sometimes the inputs and these the outputs. So I'm going to choose some x values. I choose x is 0 because that's an easy one. If x is 0, then a fifth of 0 is just plain old 0. And 0 plus 2 is 2. That's an easy one to graph, 0, 2. But that's not enough information to get me a line drawn, so I need to choose some other ones. Now as I look at this particular equation, I notice that the first thing I'm going to do to x is divide by 5 or multiply by a fifth. So I am going to choose a number like 5 that when I multiply a fifth of 5, well, if you do that in your head, it's 1, and 1 plus 2 is 3. It's an easy number to work with. I chose 5 here because of that fifth. 5, 3 is enough to actually get me my line. We usually choose a third point, though, so that we can verify that all of our work is correct um, and make sure that we haven't made any mistakes. So then I'm going to... Um, choose another number that also works with that cross-canceling. So I'll have y equals one-fifth times negative 5 over 1 plus 2. And all I've done is I've taken this negative 5 and I've put it right there and I've rewritten the equation. So I have one-fifth times negative 5. A quick cross-canceling will show me that that's negative 1 over 1 or simply negative 1 plus 2. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. That's my output. So now my final uh, point is negative 5, 1. And as we notice, it's linear. These points line up. Okay, so as you can see, the y equals notation is really nice for graphing. It's quick and it's simple because your y is set equal to the rest of the equation. You can quickly input x values and get y value outputs right back out. So I like that. If you have something in standard notation, one option is to do algebra to get it into y equals notation. y equals blah blah blah. So you would have to subtract 3x and subtract 3x and you'd have to get all of those things by themselves. But that's a lot of work. So another method is called graphing by the intercepts. We're going to graph by the y-intercept. Now, when we take a table and we put x equals 0 into it, we have to think, where does x equal 0? x equals 0 here, but also at this order of pair, that's 0, 2. At this one, 0, 5. At this one, 0, negative 5, whatever that says. Actually, any, whoa, anywhere along this, this axis, that is where x is 0. So I am going to be graphing where x is 0. If I put a 0 in here, 3 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 2y just basically leaves us with this equation. 2y equals 12. So 2 times something is 12. 2 times 6. When x is 0, y is 6. And we get a point 0, 6. Now, 
Graphing by the intercept says, let's also look at what happens when we make y zero. When we make y zero, we're talking about this point, but also three zero is where y is zero. This point, in fact, every point along the x-axis is where y is equal to zero. So we're going to also look at where this line is crossing the x-axis. It's wherever y is zero. So if I put a zero in for y, that makes this whole term two times zero, zero, and three plus x, or sorry, three times x plus zero is really just three x equals 12. Three times what is 12? Four. So when y is zero, this gets to be four. That was really quick and really easy. And now I'll graph four zero. Now, over here we did three different ordered pairs. That's nice insurance, but if you already have something in standard form and you make x zero find y, make y zero and find x, it is a fast way to determine the unique direction of the line. Two points determines a unique line. There's no other way that you could draw that line other than through those two points. So that is graphing by the intercepts where we intercepted the y-axis or crossed over it and where we intercepted the x-axis or crossed over that. And you always use this basic table setup. It's always this guy. It's a table of where x is 0, plug it in, find y, and where y is 0, plug it in, find x. Okay, so that is two ways to graph. Graphing the three points when you're in y equals notation, and graphing by the intercepts when you're in standard form. Next thing, I want you to understand that this is a line, and this is a line. These are linear equations, which means we could write them in the form ax plus by equals c. I know this is going to sound a little weird, but check it out. 0 times x plus 1 times y equals negative 3. What's 0 times x? 0. So we have blah. 1y equals negative 3. That's what this says right here. If we looked at this one, we could write 1x plus 0y equals 2. I can write it in standard form. It must be a line. So my next question to you is, where does y equal negative 3? Well, y equals negative 3 here. It also equals it here. So I've listed the points 0, negative 3, and uh, 4, negative 3, and I could have also chosen the point mm, here. That's the point negative 2, negative 3. Y equals negative 3 everywhere along this line. A special case, horizontal lines. Horizontal lines start with Y equals, and then you have some number. Whatever the number is, I'll call it a smiley face. That is your horizontal line. This line is where x equals 2. x equals 2 here, but also at this ordered pair, and this one, and this one, I've listed 2, 0, 2, 3, 2, 7, and I can't, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, negative 5. In fact, x equals 2 everywhere along this line. The special case of vertical lines is anywhere we have x equals some number. Doesn't matter what it is as long as it's some number. Okay, so we've looked at uh, vertical lines and horizontal lines, and I think that'll do it for today.